Hello all. Today I am going to discuss about role and responsibilities of the engineer. As per second edition of FIDIC Yellow Book released in 2017. In a construction contract based on FIDIC form, the two parties, employer and contractor, are never alone. They have an engineer who is not a party to the contract between employer and contractor. It is to be noted that FIDIC Silver Book 2017 and the FIDIC Gold Book 2008 have an employer's representative in place of an engineer and are outside the scope of present discussion. Under the FIDIC Gold Book, the employer's representative has a similar role to that of the engineer. However, under the FIDIC Silver Book, the position of the employer's representative is considerably different. Let us begin the discussion on role of engineer under the second edition of FIDIC Yellow Book 2017. As stated earlier, there is always a third person between employer and contractor who is known as the engineer. And this person always play a dominating role in the contracts founded on FIDIC Red Book and Yellow Book conditions of contract. Contractor's main contact person is the engineer under the contract for all contractual and administrative issues and not the employer. The engineer takes decisions which in other form of contracts would be taken by the employer. Clause 3 of FIDIC Red and Yellow Book relates to the engineer. In the earlier FIDIC 99 edition of Yellow Book, Clause 3 has only 5 subclauses without detailed procedure and time limits for engineer's determination. But there are some major changes in Clause 3 under second edition of FIDIC Yellow Book released in December 2017. The number of subclauses increased from 5 to 8. These additional clauses are named as Subclause 3.1, the engineer. Subclause 3.3, .3, the engineer's representative. The Subclause 3.5, Engineer's instruction requires that if contractor believe that an instruction by engineer is a variation, he has to give notice immediately before its compliance. However, this subclause is silent on if contractor claims a variation later on without a notice. Role of engineer is now more prescriptive and procedural in nature and engineer is expected to act neutrally when exercising authority under subclause 3.7. The subclause 3.7 is lengthy and is spread over three pages and needs time for understanding. As per new subclause 3.8 meetings, engineer is obliged to keep record of meetings and supply the copies of minutes of meeting to the participants. Now let us talk about who is the engineer. Definition of the engineer is given in subclause 1.1.35. According to it, engineer is the person appointed by the employer to act as the engineer for the purposes of the contract and named in contract data. Or other person appointed from time to time by the employer and notified to the contractor under subclause 3.6 replacement of the engineer. These days, generally, engineer is a company or corporation who is a legal entity as opposed to an individual or a natural person. This company names a person to act on its behalf as an engineer as per subclass 3.1. It is to be noted that FIDIC Yellow and Red Book does not prevent an employer from appointing a salaried employees as an engineer. Also, the engineer is included within the definition of employer's personnel in subclause 1.1.32 of FIDIC. However, appointment of an employer's employee 
एज एन इंजीनियर इज लाइकली टू बी अ कॉज ऑफ डिस्ट्रस्ट कैन एन एम्प्लॉय एक्ट न्यूट्रली फेयर माइंडेड एंड इन अनबायस्ड मैनर रिमेन्स अ सब्जेक्ट ऑफ डिस्कशन कॉन्ट्रेक्टर विल फ्रीक्वेंटली एक्यूज दैट इंजीनियर इज इंफ्लुएंस्ड बाय द एम्प्लॉयर्स विशेज and is unable to act neutrally if he is an employee of the employer further sub clause 3.1 requires that engineer should be a professional engineer having suitable qualification experience and competence also he should be fluent in the ruling language of the contract which is defined in sub clause 1.4 law and language and stated in contract data under sub clause 3.6 the employer may replace the engineer by giving the contractor 42 days notice before the intended date of replacement the notice should comprise the name address and relevant experience of the intended replacement engineer it is to be noted that this notice should comply with the requirements set out in sub clause 1.3 of the fedic notices and communication be in writing sent to the correct address by an approved means and copied to the engineer however employer is not required to give reasons for the replacement the contractor may object such a replacement within 14 days after receiving the notice of replacement if no notice of objection contractor is deemed to have accepted the replacement on the other hand employer will not appoint proposed engineer if reasonable objection raised by contractor within the 14 days time limit by a notice there is no provision for the contractor to request the replacement of the engineer under sub clause 3.6 yet if contractor finds that engineer is incompetent he may proceed to allege that such incompetence constituted a breach of sub clause 3.1's requirement that the engineer shall be suitable qualified and competent to carry out similar approach may be used by contractor to replace engineer's incompetent staff let us discuss about what is the engineer's role engineer's role is to administer the contract act on behalf of the employer as his agent and he also makes determination engineer is not a party to the contract the obligation is on the employer to appoint an engineer who shall carry out the duties and responsibilities assigned to him in the contract here the reference to word contract is not the consultancy agreement between the employer and consultant but to the term contract defined in sub clause 1.1.9 under fedic conditions of contract in nutshell engineers main duties are notifying the commencement date review of design submitted by contractor and issue no objection or rejection the word approval is now replaced with no objection now engineer has only two options no objection with or without comments documents fail to meet contract requirements review of contractors design and construction programs issue instructions as per the contract including for variations inspection and testing of the works his responsibility also includes issue interim payment certificates a final statement and a final payment certificate issuing instructions including for variations is also his responsibility issue notices to correct failures determine the adjustment in the contract price for unremitted defects or damages issue the taking over certificate issue the performance certificate assess and make determinations of the contractor's claims 
for additional cost and extension of time as per the provisions of clause 20. The employer should not instruct the engineer to depart from his duties under the contract as any such instruction for deviation will be a breach of contract and the contractor will be able to claim damages if he can prove a loss. Also the engineer has no authority to relieve either party of any duties, obligations and responsibilities provided under the contract. Engineer's duties are also to appointment of its own staff to carry out the duties provided under the contract. No express requirements for the engineer to be based at site for the full duration of contract. So one person can assume the duties of engineer on multiple projects. Engineer may appoint its construction manager, a project manager who will be based at site for full time. He is required to obtain approval of employer for the matters stated in contract data. Engineer cannot delegate his authority of agreement or determination to his, his representatives based at site. Engineer is not required to obtain employer's approval before the exercise of his authority under subclass 3.7 agreement or determination for the following. Impact, time and cost on contractor due to errors in setting out data provided by employer. Determination of entitlements due to unforeseeable physical condition. Cost and time entitlement due to suspension of works by employer. Consequences of exceptional event or you can call it force major event, extension of time due to discovery of fossils, valuation of variations and extension of time claims, consequences of uh, exceptional events. However, engineer needs employer's approval in certain cases. If Engineer is required employer's approval, then employer must disclose all such requirements by including it in the particular conditions where engineer has a duty to obtain approval of the employer. Most of the employer would like that the engineer must obtain the specific approval of the employer before agreeing or determining an extension of time and a additional cost approving a contractor's proposal for a variation specifying the amount payable under subclass 13.4 provisional sums. Let us talk about time limits for determination under subclass 3.7. Engineer is required to act neutrally while making determination and parties have first 42 days to reach an agreement through the consultation with engineer jointly or separately. If parties are unable to reach to no agreement, engineer has further 42 days to make determination and issue a notice to this effect. So in all practicality, engineer has 84 days to make its determination. If no notice of determination by engineer, then it is deemed rejection by him and issue becomes a deemed dispute. Let us discuss three different scenarios under subclass 3.7 regarding engineer's determination. Scenario 1. Agreement is reached within 42 days, however, error found in engineer's notice of agreement. Let us discuss scenario 1. Agreement is reached within 42 days, error found in engineer's notice of agreement and which is corrected. Engineer starts performing duties under subclass 3.7 after receiving a matter for its determination. During the first 42 days, 
parties try to reach an agreement through consultation where engineer facilitate these consultation separately or jointly to the parties if parties are able to reach an agreement within this 42 days engineer will issue a notice of agreement to both the parties employer and contractor upon receiving this notice of agreement a party identifies an error in this notice of agreement however such party is required to issue a notice to the engineer for correcting this agreement within the 14 days after the receipt of the same engineer after receiving this notice for correction within 7 days he will issue a corrected agreement to both the parties that is employer and contractor let us discuss about scenario 2 parties early advise that agreement cannot be reached and so engineer's determination is necessary no error found in engineer's determination again engineer starts performing duties under sub clause 3.7 after receiving a matter for its determination engineer try to facilitate consultation between the parties within first 42 days however parties are not able to reach an agreement so now engineers determination is necessary in next 42 days engineer makes its determination and issue a engineers notice of agreement pursuant to sub clause 3.72 and there is no notice of error is received within the 14 days after issuing this notice of agreement or is notice of determination if either party is dissatisfied with this engineers determination he is supposed to issue within 28 days of receiving this engineers determination a notice of dissatisfaction to the employer and a copy with engineer now discuss about scenario 3 no agreement within 42 days engineer determines within 42 days however a error is found in engineer's determination which is corrected engineer starts performing his duties after receiving a matter for its determination engineer try to facilitate an agreement through consultations between the parties in first 42 days however within 42 days there is no agreement between the parties so now engineer makes its determination within next 42 days and issues a notice of determination to both the parties however one of the parties which is either employer or contractor identifies a error in notice of determination this error should be notified to the engineer within 14 days of receiving the notice of determination from the engineer if a notice of error is issued within a 14 days of receiving the notice of determination from the engineer then engineer has 7 days to correct this error and issue a revise notice of agreement to both the parties upon receiving this revised notice of agreement both the parties have 28 days to issue a notice of dissatisfaction under sub clause 3.7.5 let us discuss engineer's role in claim process suppose employer considers that employer is entitled to additional payment reduction in contract price or extension of defect notification period similarly contractor considers that contractor is entitled to additional payment or an extension of time the claiming party either employer or contractor is required to give a notice of claim to the engineer within 28 days after it become aware or should have become aware of the event or circumstances giving rise to a claim 
failure to give this notice, the claim is a time bar. Despite of this, if either party submits a notice of claim to the engineer, and if the engineer considers that the notice is time barred, it gives a notice to the claiming party within 14 days of receipt of this notice of claim. If the claiming party disagrees with the engineer or there are circumstances which justifies its late submission, it will include the details when submitting its fully detailed claim pursuant to subclass 20.2.2 the issue of time bar is then resolved along with the claim itself by the engineer. If the engineer does not give a notice within 14 days upon receiving a notice of claim, then this notice shall be deemed a valid notice. However, if other party disagrees with the such deemed validity of notice, it gives a notice to the engineer with details. The issue of time bar is again resolved along with the claim itself. The claiming party is obliged to submit fully detailed claims to the engineer within 84 days or such other period as agreed after becoming aware or should have become aware of the event or circumstances giving rise to the claim. Along with this, after submission of notice of claim, the claiming party, either employer or contractor, is obliged to submit fully detailed claims to the engineer within 84 days or such other period as agreed. After becoming aware or should have become aware of the events or circumstances giving rise to the claim. Along with this fully detailed claim, provision of a statement of the contractual and legal basis of the claim is required to be submitted. Failure to submit such a statement claim is a time bar. If a claim has a continuous effect, then employer and contractor is required to maintain contemporary record. If the engineer considers that the statement of contractual or legal basis is time barred, it gives a notice to the claiming party within 14 days after expiry of the time limit stated in subclause 20.2.4. If the claiming party disagrees with the engineer or there are circumstances which justifies its late submission, it will include the details when submitting its fully detailed claim. The issue of time bar is then resolved along with the claim itself. On the other hand, if engineer does not give a notice within 14 days, the notice of claim shall be deemed a valid notice. However, the other party may disagree to the same and such deemed validity of the notice. It gives a notice to the engineer with details of disagreement the issue of disagreement is again resolved along with the claim itself. Upon receiving a fully detailed claim, engineer may issue a request for additional particulars, documents with a reason for requiring them. The receiving date of these additional particulars shall be the date of commencement of the time limit for agreement under subclause 3.7.3. Upon re receiving the additional particulars or fully detailed particulars of the claim, engineer consults with the parties in an attempt to reach an agreement pursuant to subclass 20.2.5 and 3.7.1. If a agreement is reached between the parties through consultation, the engineer will issue a notice of agreement to the parties. If no agreement within the period of 42 days, our parties advise that agreement cannot be reached, 
engineer shall determine the claim in next 42 days and will issue a notice of engineer's determination to both the parties. If either party is dissatisfied with the determination of engineer, it gives a notice of dissatisfaction within 28 days of receiving the notice of engineer's determination. If both the parties does not give a notice of dissatisfaction, then engineer's determination becomes final and binding to both the parties. If either party is dissatisfied with the determination of engineer, it is required to give a notice of dissatisfaction within 28 days of receiving the notice of engineer's determination. Failure to give a notice of dissatisfaction is a time bar provision under the FIDIC 2017. Within 42 days of giving notice of dissatisfaction, either party may refer the dispute to dispute adjudication and avoidance board under subclass 21.4. Failure to refer this dispute within 42 days to the dispute adjudication and avoidance board, then engineer's determination again becomes final and binding. There is some common misreading about engineer's role. A general belief is that engineer has an obligation to treat contractor impartially and equally, actually which is not there. I would like to highlight subclass 3.2 clearly provides that the engineer has neither the right nor the duty to depart from the terms of the contract and it also clearly states that the engineer acts for the employer. However, engineer is obliged to act neutrally with a general obligation to consult the parties before making a decision pursuant to subclass 3.7 and determine fairly the amounts due to contractor under subclass 14.6 and 14.13 which will always remain open to interpretation and discussion. In this short video, till now, we talked about engineer's appointment, roles and responsibilities and timelines for making determination in FIDIC 2017 yellow book. We can see that there is a considerable increase in the number of deadlines and procedures for handling the claims and determination. An engineer is required to pay the attention about the same. Thank you.